My name is Chase Ginther. I'm one of Snowflake's principal AI architects. Uh, my role is, and my team's role here at Snowflake, is we help address our customers' AI problems. We come in and we work with you to uh, build AI applications um, you know, on your data and ultimately get you onto a path of success for AI. So my talk today here, we're going to dip our toes into the world of building agents around Cortex. We'll sort of uh, start to explore what Snowflake can provide in that space, different tools you can pull from the Snowflake toolbox to build these types of applications, and also talk about some of the best practices around that. Sound good? All right. So um, of course, a little bit of a disclaimer before we, before we get started. Um, so we're going to, again, talk about what makes it difficult. We're going to talk a little bit about why enterprise data retrieval is really important. And then we're going to talk into all the adjacencies around building agentic AI applications. That is orchestration, authentication, observability, and monitoring. And then we'll put it all together at the end. So ultimately, what makes building conversational agents difficult? And really, it still comes down to an age-long trend that Snowflake set out to solve many years ago, which is siloed enterprise data. Gen AI has only furthered this trend, right? especially with the need of having highly curated, unstructured data available for agents. Right? So what we're seeing is the proliferation of bespoke retrieval tools. And that's something that Snowflake has really set out to solve. This in itself, this fact alone, leads to additional challenges. Right? Challenges around managing access and identity. How do you sync access controls, identity, and authentication across multiple different tools? And when you do that, that leads to challenges around auditing, logging, and monitoring applications, and then ultimately evaluating applications. And then again, when you have all of these tools stitched together, when somebody asks you the question of, how much does a single call of my agentic application cost? Can you answer that question? How do you actually measure the TCO from your application and the business value that it's driving? That is another challenge. So we have, over the last 12 to 24 months, introduced our concept of the AI applications framework. Right? It starts with governed data on the left, it's our processing engine for our SQL engine and processing that highly structured data that you know so much about with tools like Snowpark. It's most importantly now about retrieval from this. And we're going to dive into this a little bit further with Cortex Analyst. And on the unstructured side, it's about processing unstructured documents from different storage locations. It's then utilizing tools like Cortex Search for high quality hybrid retrieval, and then agentic orchestration over top across all of these applications. To put it on its, to flip this diagram around a little bit, this is what generally, like Snowflake agnostic, if I take a step back and think about what do data agent architectures look like, I think they look a little bit something like this. Right? At, the tool, at the top, you have your application layer. That's where you're managing identity access, potentially other tools. But a very fundamental component to that, that is core to Snowflake, is this data agent layer. Then you have your retrieval layers and your data storage services underneath. So we're going to dive into a couple of these different components. And we're going to start, again, with the retrieval layer and what Snowflake does to help in this space. So first of all, with unstructured data retrieval. This is where we introduced Cortex Search a little um, about 12 months ago. This is, to be clear, I don't have time to go into all the depth around what Cortex Search is, and we can certainly follow up around this. But the quick summary is it is a hybrid search engine that leverages vector, data vector embeddings for semantic similarity, as well as lexical search. Um, and to give you hybrid retrieval, that gives you state-of-the-art quality retrieval tools. It is now increasingly highly customizable as well. It's fully managed, right? So we can automatically process updates on your unstructured data as it's being loaded in, uh, into Snowflake. Then there's structured data retrieval. This is all about Cortex Analyst. And I'm sure many of you have heard a lot about Cortex Analyst, certainly this week, perhaps before. Again, this, is not, this presentation is not a deep dive fully into what Cortex Analyst does. 
at a high level is a fully managed agentic LLM system that leverages our concept of a semantic model, now with semantic views, as you all have learned this week, that has multiple steps behind the scenes. Naturally, it understands the context of your question, potentially classifies it, enriches it, potentially rewrites the question into a better question that the um, underlying model can answer, and then generates the necessary SQL. Of course, all of this is really only possible to do at, with a high quality when you have high quality semantic models. And what we've learned over the last 12 months or so to reach that high quality structured data retrieval, you have got to put a lot of uh, effort into curating those semantic models. So with our administration UI, it's very easy for you to now iterate, collect feedback, and improve those semantic models. So that was all about retrieval. OK, so if you think of those two elements as two key tools, right? now we need to think about, if I'm building a conversational application, I most often don't know a priori what is the source of data that the user's question is going to be about. And that's where orchestration comes in. And this is where the concept of a data agent layer comes in. Right? And so there's a couple ways to think about this within Snowflake. Of course, you've heard around Cortex agents this week. It's an out-of-the-box integration routing between these structured and unstructured sources. You can define Cortex search services as tools. You can define Cortex analyst semantic models as tools. And you can let Snowflake orchestrate based off the user's question across these different tools. It's convenient in that it provides a single authentication point and access control point around this. However, we have many customers that want to do even more around orchestration. Right? And that's where, because everything we've talked about in this presentation so far is available in a REST API. Right? We have built this as an API forward solution that you can take our APIs, integrate them with open source tools. I wasn't able to update this slide just in time, but on Friday, Snowflake, uh, we launched our open source MCP framework. Right? You can orchestrate with open source tools as well across these different, uh, these, different tool, these different retrieval tools. So now that brings us to managing identity and access. Right? So this is a big challenge uh, for managing identity in an application layer. There's a couple different ways to think about that. The first and the simplest form is a service role. A, why would you do that? It's simple. Right? Here's the caveat with service roles. First of all, you have to keep, be mindful of things like key, key rotation. Um, but you also have to be mindful that it's sort of providing uh, all users the same level of access to that application. Right? And maybe you will take on the responsibility of making sure that the only users that can access that application do have that same level of access to the underlying data. That is, the tr that is sort of the trade-off. However, you could also, for an internal focused application, you could use federated identity, so something like single sign-on and OAuth. This is where you can actually leverage something like uh, Skim to sync your identity provider to Snowflake. This is required because in order to authenticate with one of our APIs, the user enroll must exist in Snowflake before the user can actually log in. And this is where Skim can be really useful. So you can put your authoritative directory in control of Skim. This is integrations with Okta, Azure Active Directory, or any generally any system that um, adheres to the Skim standard. So now we get to logging, monitoring, and evaluation. So again, there's many elements to thinking about monitoring a conversational application. There's cost. Again, can you answer the question for every single call? Uh, that uh, you know, someone makes, can you answer the question of how much does that cost right, for your application? Then there's access. Who is logging into the application? Right? How, what network access? What network endpoint are they coming from? What underlying, tool, uh, was, how, what underlying tools were called as part, of that, as part of that? And then there's quality evaluation. So how are you evaluating quality for things like groundedness, groundedness context relevance, and answer relevance? And most importantly, how are you collecting user feedback? 
That's something we're constantly working on with customers as they start to move, in particular, Cortex analyst semantic models into production. Monitoring your semantic, your, your semantic model and identifying, hey, this is an area where we're starting to get some user feedback um, that the model is not handling this too well and improving it. So we have some tools across the Snowflake toolbox to help with this. So first of all, um, and this is a core Snowflake feature, not necessarily something that's specific to AI, but we, uh, you can audit log within your account usage views, and you can get full uh, detail on all users' activity, all uh, select statements they run, um, all queries that they run, all uh, API calls that they make. All, all drivers and connectors within Snowflake have this logging built in right out of the box. Um, we oh, got to move to this. Um, we also most recently launched Snowflake's AI observability feature. So now you're monitoring. So previously you're monitoring on the security side, but now you're starting to think about how do I actually evaluate my applications end to end? Again, we have a concept of a single trace that can identify what tools are being called, what is the latency, what is the token count at each step in a single trace um, within a single call. This is something that's built on the open telemetry standard. It's the data stored in Snowflake, so it's easy, easily queryable. If you wanted to export it to another tool, you could do that as well. But ultimately, you can track and compare metrics, um, again, like relevance, groundedness, across different experiments, as well as when your application goes live. We also provide a lot of telemetry back in, um, in our usage views. So if you this is something I work with every customer that's sort of going, uh, moving towards production within Cortex. These are the usage views that make the administrators of these solutions. It helps them keep sane. It helps them sort of monitor the health of their application and what's going on. Again, we have our Cortex analyst request where you can see all the requests that are uh, being logged uh, to um, the underlying semantic model. Um, there's our Cortex search daily usage history, so you can see uh, the uh, daily usage across different serving and embedding costs, and then ultimately all of the local AI uh, observability events, so everything that's being logged uh, through the AI observability framework as well um, in our open source package called TrueLens. So when you put this all together, what does this architecture begin to take shape, and what does it start to look like? So again, at the top, there is your conversational agent application layer. This is something that you can build external to Snowflake. You can manage uh, identity and access. You could use that to sync to something like your identity provider through, through Skim. You could use open source orchestration tools in combination uh, with something like Cortex Agents or just use Cortex Agents to orchestrate down to your semantic and retrieval layer. right? And this is where we, we focus on really high quality retrieval for both structured data and unstructured data. So in summary, what, where does this leave us and why Snowflake can be an effective toolbox for building conversational applications? Um, the first point I really want to emphasize from, from the conversation today is that we provide modular components to build conversational applications. Right? As you've seen through the architecture, there's different components you can choose to use in combination with other tools that you may be using outside of Snowflake. You can use Cortex Search by itself. You can use Cortex Analyst by itself. You can use Cortex Agents. You can combine this with open source orchestration frameworks. You can build these apps in the frameworks of your choice. You can build them um, you know, in, in uh, something like JavaScript, uh, something in like React on the application level. But we have a lot of strong adjacencies surrounding these features. So native core Snowflake features like skim support to IDPs make it easy to simplify um, syncing to your Active Directory or um, a directory service on users. Um, we have strong governing and logging across the entire platform, which makes it easier to monitor the health of your application, but also track cost and usage of the application. And again, this is how you can really start to answer the question of what, what TCO looks like. Now, to be really clear, this is a, a nice option for those of you that want to build these very custom conversational applications. As you saw yesterday as well, Snowflake Intelligence is a great tool that can pro provide that conversational interface right out of the box. 
right? So if you are looking for something more managed, Snowflake Intelligence is also a great fit for you.